gang what's going on guys so today it's a nice cloudy 50 degree day I figure let's go to the local stream I think there's gonna be some stock trout in here I'm gonna show you guys how to euro nymph so if you're just getting into fly fishing or you're looking to expand your skill set if you're just getting into the euro nymphing game I think this video is gonna be able to help you guys out maybe just a little bit if it does I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button if you enjoy this type of content but we're out here, it's pretty simple. Water levels are perfect. We're gonna get in here, dissect the water. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to look for when you're out here. Where are the trout gonna be sitting and how to target them? So I'm gonna switch cameras. I'm gonna show you guys the flies, the exact setup that we have today. As always, you can find the flies on my website, ddflies.com. There's a link down in the description, check it out. Everything you guys buy on there supports the channel and the flies work really well. You've seen it in all the videos. So we're gonna get in here. We're gonna start fishing. Today our dropper fly is gonna be the Orange Crush. This is a relatively new fly. If you guys haven't been on the website in a while, definitely check this one out. This is gonna do damage this year. And then down from that, we gotta do it. DWW, basic junk fly. All right guys, so this is a pretty good example here. So over there, we got some nice rocks. Hold on, where am I pointing? All right, nice rocks. We wanna fish the calm water behind it. Now, when this water gets really warm, closer to summer, the fish will just be literally right in the fast water. And they might be right now, but we are gonna work our way over to that calm spot. All right, so we got our rocks here. We got the calm water behind. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna fish that slow water right behind those rocks. Right through there is a good zone. See this calm area? We're gonna fish this calm area. You got that big rock breaking up the current. So I think the trout are gonna be laying right in this calm water. We're gonna Euro nymph this and give it a shot. Feel some rocks. Oh, had one, guys. Had one. Right in there, guys. So you just want to bring your line through nice and tight. And there we go. Trout on. So you guys could see where I got that trout right out of the pocket. You want to be looking for these calm areas. And, uh, you know, they're going to hold some fish for you. So pretty simple stuff. This is what you would call pocket water fishing. Looks like we got a little stock trout here. Go ahead and keep him in the water as long as we can. And this one came on the DWW, guys. Alrighty, guys, let's get this guy back in here. Come on, dude, you're free to go. Now, when you're out here with the Euro rod, guys, the key is to keep your line nice and tight so you can feel the fish right away. If I were to throw an indicator in there, I may not have felt that fish until I actually saw the, you know, the bobber go down. So if you want to get into some Euro nymphing, it's really, really effective. We're going to throw back in there and see if we can get another trout. Usually when you're fishing these stock streams, they kind of pile up in one spot. So we'll throw in. And we'll just keep a nice tight line. All right, so I guess we can get to another topic in current seams. You guys want to work the current seams, and by seam, 
I mean right on the edge of where the fast and the slow water meet. So over here, right around the rock, you have that fast water. You can see it, the white water. And then here on the inside, it's slow. So instead of just going right down Main Street, right down that calm water, you want to work that edge. You want your flies to go right down that seam of where the different speeds in the water meet each other. Now before we go farther downstream, I do want to show you guys some other areas up through this faster pocket water. So let's just take a minute here. We got a good little pocket right in here, okay? And then we got another pocket out here, so that's two spots. There might be a trout here and there, so we'll try both of these. We got our riffle, we got our calm water, we got kind of more calm water here on the inside of the bend. And then the whole tail out looks pretty good too. So I think what we'll do, we'll go all the way to the bottom, we'll fish our way up. That way we really cover it thoroughly. We'll try the calm side, cover our tracks up through there. You want to wait out as far as you think you can make it and with that extra reach of your rod you want to try to not do what I just did and hit that branch we got really lucky let's check our flies make sure everything's good to go good on that one good on that one so let's be a little smarter here kind of do a line drive cast this time Boom. So now we're on the other side of the current. We're in the other calm area. The less fish side. And we're gonna get right up to this main riffle. Now there's a log in there too, so you wanna watch your snags. But no guts, no glory. You get right in there. You can feel bottom, bottom, bottom. It's a good drift though. Nothing's better Euro nymphing than when you feel those flies just ticking the rocks perfectly. We would know exactly when a trout bit right there. Kind of like that right there, guys. So there's another trout. So we worked our way slowly up through the pool. And that's why you start at the bottom. Even though, whoa, what's behind me? A big rock almost fell. So guys, again, that's why you work your way up. Now, just from standing here, yes, was I thinking all the fish were gonna be right at the front? For sure, but you can't just go right in there because you woulda, you woulda messed up all this area, especially if there was a nice holdover or a smarter wild fish in the stream that you're out fishing on. You woulda messed the whole pool up. Wow, and that one's got really good color. Also, if you're new to fly fishing, or just in general, do your very best to just keep these fish in the water. Unless you're gonna take them home, that's reasonable. Now this one took the orange crush. This is a new fly on the website, guys. Check this one out. This represents a Hendrickson nymph too, so it's good this time of year. I highly recommend you pick some of these up. I think they're gonna potentially these might potentially give the DHSH a run for their money. We're, we're going to know later this year on the Batten Kill and some other larger rivers which one is really taking the cake. But I have a really good feeling about that fly, guys. Took a while to come up with that one. So again, we got a nice little stocked brown trout. And he's chewing on the net. And we'll go ahead and send him on his way. And he was pretty much right in the head of the pool. So we'll go right back into the main area. 
Got another one, guys. Look at that. They really do bunch up. And when you're on this tight line, you're a nymph setup, man. You feel the bite right away. I mean, it's right away, guys. If you're not into Euro nymphing, I highly recommend it. Another little stock trout here. Try to find some bigger ones. And look at that, guys. Right on cue. Another score for the orange crush. I mean, look at the other fly that they could take. A squirmy, and these are stock trout. They're still taking the orange crush. See ya, dude. Try that near side again. They seem to be right on that point, right on that corner. Right in there. And there's another one. Another one, guys. I mean, when you get on these stocked fish, they just pot up. They just pot up. This one took the, uh, this one took our DWW. This fish is fighting a little better. I haven't seen it yet. Perhaps it's a larger trout. Or he's just got a lot of energy. Eh, slightly bigger. Same size here. Yeah, that's a really colorful one. Let me get you guys a good look at this trout. It's a nice looking fish. Get you guys a bit of a look at this trout here. So you see how the fins are all beat up? If this was a wild fish, it would have perfect edges. It looked like a perfect triangle. So that's a good way to tell a stocked fish from a wild fish. Uh-oh. Stuck. All right, we lost the orange crush. We lost the orange crush. We're gonna have to retie. These are some of the flies. All of these are on the website. All of these patterns. So if you guys like the looks of any of these, you can check out the website, grab some for yourself. But we're gonna go back with that orange crush. I was thinking maybe a DSP. But uh, yeah, we're gonna stick with the orange crush today. It's working well, so we're gonna tie that back on. That's a size 14. And we're gonna get into this nice, nice area here. And hopefully find a big trout. Let's let's go find a 20 inch trout, guys. It's starting to rain a little bit. Nice and cloudy. These conditions are perfect. Try right in front of us first. Oh, had bottom. We had bottom. Let's check our flies. Flies are good. You guys want to make sure you're staying out in front of your line. Like you want to be just ahead of your flies. Really lead them down the river so there's no slack in that line. You basically want it to be tight to your flies. Maybe just a hair of slack. But you want to stay out in front of those flies. We'll get right up into this pocket now. You can see this pocket in the middle. That's what's gonna hold a very, very large trout, in my opinion. Not sure if we're getting down deep enough here. Yeah, it's just not getting down, really. There's a back swirl in there. It's making the drift really difficult. Found another little pocket up here, guys. I think it's worth a cast. Pretty fast water in here, but I guess you never know. So again, we got this rock, and we got like a six foot pocket, six or eight feet. So we're gonna try it out. Really fast water. I doubt anything is gonna be up in the zone, but it's only one way to find out, right? 
give this a shot. Alright, was worth a try. No way. Wow, look at this tree. Hold on. Look at this. Hold on, guys. I gotta put my... Hold on. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Let me put this down. Look at this tree. Look at this. Look at this tree. This is incredible. Look at the... Look at the... This is like hand-painted. Look at this tree. This is sick. Is that the bark? What even is, is this camo? Did someone paint this? Wow, that is wicked cool. It's just the way the bark peeled off. All right, guys, so over there, I mean, behind that rock's a good spot. Behind that rock's a good spot. But it's been a long day. I'm not going over there for a stockfish. But if you're new to fishing and you're really trying to get one or two more fish for the day, it's nice and calm over there. I think there's a good chance you guys would find some fish. It's also the side of the river that doesn't get pressured a lot. That's another thing you guys want to look for. You want to think about what side of the river are people mostly fishing from. And that's the side I'm on, so... That far side over there probably has quite a bit of trout. Oh, had one. Had one, had one, had one. We'll get this one, he'll take it. There he is. There he is, we won. We won the war. Knew he was in there. He just can't resist. Alrighty. So. This one took the DWW. Little baby trout. Little baby stocky. Yeah, the fly just came out. That makes it easy enough. Little baby stocky. Nothing special. Pay attention to kind of the water I'm casting in, how I hold my rod, the angles, how I kind of use the line, stuff like that. So. Watch the video a couple times, try to mimic what I'm doing if you're new to the game. And uh, everyone's gonna find their own little twist. Everyone has their own little style, and that's fine. Don't be ashamed to uh, just kind of do whatever's comfortable for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, definitely hit the subscribe button. If you didn't, hit the subscribe button as well because I have videos every single week, basically. It's a no-brainer, so. Appreciate you guys watching. See you in the next video.